All right, how's everyone doing? I am Rich Chalenza. Thanks for checking out my channel. So what I think I'm going to call this podcast is Everyone is Programmed. I haven't actually done a podcast or a video on mind programming or any of that stuff in a long time. Uh, but I was just thinking about it, that no matter you know who we are, what we do, we have been programmed by something or someone or a bunch of others. And I think a lot of people, maybe middle-aged or older, kind of understand that concept a little bit. They reflect to go, wow, my parents you know, taught me this, or my grandparents taught me this. And I'm not saying young people don't think that way as well, but I definitely didn't know a lot about self-behavior when I was younger. I just kind of behaved, um, I think, a lot like the adults that I was around because I was uh, usually a lot of times in a very adult type environment being in the bars and nightclubs. And I thought I can act like an adult. I also thought I had the freedom of an adult, even though really I didn't, even though I was going to school, but I didn't respect my teachers. But a lot of my programming came from an Italian household and I spent a lot of time with uh, my grandparents who were Italian immigrants. And what's quite interesting, even in my 50s now, I see myself being more like them, I think, than I ever realized. Because when I was growing up, I actually was, I'm not saying against a lot of my Italian family members, immigrants. I just thought they were uneducated to a certain degree. And then I had other uncles, aunts, and other cousins and stuff that were really hip and savvy, even my parents. And I thought, you know, they those were the cool ones, right? So I'm kind of thinking like them. I'm not thinking, you know... My grandfather with an accent or talking about a hard day's work and, you know, hanging out in the garden. He'd go fishing and very simple things in life just bored me to death. And, you know, as you age, you sometimes reflect. And the reason I want to talk about mind programming more than anything, I think, in this is because I really don't think people know how to step outside themselves and say, wow, this is how I was programmed. This is actually how I behave. When this happens, I behave this way. When this person does this, I do this. Uh, I do this every day. Why am I doing it? I have no idea. I did a podcast. What are we doing it for? You may catch yourself throughout the day doing a lot of stupid shit or things you don't really even enjoy anymore. You're just kind of going through the motions. Or you're just filling in the hours of the day with a lot of things that Again, you're just maybe wasting your time. You're just kind of programmed that way. It could be at work. It could be in your house. It could be whatever the hell it is. And I just want people to really sit back and think about, you know, how were they programmed? Because I think a lot of people think that their beliefs are very, you know, we all believe in it. We have our own core beliefs, which is wonderful. But, you know, if you have a business, say, for instance, right, you you may have programmed yourself to success. There's no question about that, right? And But also, if you have a business and you may be failing, you may have programmed yourself to kind of fail. Sometimes I, wa- I do watch a lot of football. And I almost look at certain teams, and I watched one yesterday against actually a better kind of team. But I sometimes say a lot of teams, you know, they are programmed or they know how to win. And almost other teams or franchises that lose year after year after year, no matter who they are, they're almost programmed to lose, which still really doesn't make sense to me. Uh, And a lot of times, a lot of teams that lose are in really good cities. They get really good players year after year in all different types of sports. But I wonder, you know, sometimes too in life, you know, regarding just programming again, And their situation is, are you programming your life to succeed or are you programming your life to failure? And I think no matter who you are, especially if you take risks, you're going to have you know wins and failures or you're going to succeed at times and fail at other times. You also make, may succeed in a lot of things and then in other things in your life, you're failing, right? You could have a great business, horrible marriage, right? Or a great marriage, horrible workplace, whatever the case may be. And, you know, I think, again, I think we look to, you know, we may not even look to it, I should say. But I look at my parents, even my grandparents, a lot of my uncles, my aunts, 
my cousins, because I have a massive family. And you know, a lot of us, it is almost like history repeating itself. Like a lot of us do the same type of things, right or wrong. And it just kind of, it, it really makes things very interesting for me because what's really nuts is when I was 18, I moved out of Chicago. I moved to Florida. I hated the weather in Chicago and I was going back and forth to Florida in the summers doing summer school. I kind of had throughout high school two different lifestyles and I liked Florida better. Even though I didn't have any friends or anything, I left a massive family and I was the first one to do it. Left all my friends. Uh, They all went to college. I just went to Florida and I was on the fence about doing that. But to make a long story short, you know, as I got older and as time went on, I kind of now, you know, and I still believe me, go back to Chicago a lot. I was just here last month and I spend usually months a year there. So I definitely never lost touch with my roots, with my family or anyone. And I always kind of found it funny how different pe- how people perceive me. I've discussed this before is when I'm in Florida, they look at me as a Chicago, New York city slicker, I guess, style guy because I travel too, but I guess my accent, my attitude, right? And then as time went on in Chicago, I'm known as a Florida guy, even though maybe my accent may not sound Southern, but you get the point. And it's funny how other people perceive you, you know, they're programmed to perceive me a certain way. And then I, I'm programmed myself to perceive them a certain way. And my point being is when I'm in my Chicago environment, I feel like I'm, you know, programmed to be a Chicago type person. I fit right in. It's like an old shoe. Then say when I came to, when I'm in Florida, I'm sorry, then I am almost programmed an entirely different way from the way I dress to the way I act to the way almost I even think about how I live my life from day to day. And I don't think a lot of people actually have that going on in their lives simultaneously. I think a lot of people may live in a certain city, right, for a while, and then they kind of go back to another city or move. And again, they obviously always are going to be a big part of who where they grew up and where they were programmed again, and they're going to evolve. So if you're from Chicago and then you reta- you're in Naples, Florida, of course you're going to be different, right? But in my case, I've been, it's been very interesting because I've almost lived two different kind of lifestyles because I was in Chicago so much and I was in Florida a lot. Then I ended up going to California. But when I got to California, I definitely loved Southern California to death. I really did. But I definitely knew I didn't fit in there like I did with, say, Chicago and Florida. My point describing all this is I almost was starting to study my behavior really and what I do when I'm each in each state and each city. And then for like 10 years, let's say, I started traveling everywhere. Then I kind of became known as a guy who no one ever knew where I was. Um, no one knew what city or state I even lived in. Most people thought I'd say I lived in either California, Florida at this point in time, or maybe even somewhere on the East Coast like Boston or Chicago. And again, I was studying all these different behaviors of all these different people. And, you know, I would be in Boston like, wow, this is really fits me. Their little Italy is very similar to what I miss about Chicago. I don't feel it had that vibe anymore. Uh, vibe anymore. Everyone's kind of speaking Italian still on the streets. I felt it to be the most legit little Italy. And I would stay there. And that was my spot when I was there. Even in Canada or, you know, or... Um, <clears throat> If I was in New York, I'd kind of, you know, Mulberry Street, I'd go there. I've even done videos on it. It was just more commercialized, um, which is a great spot. But as time went on, I realized even my programming, I started to stay in all these, these cities that were mainly Italian communities. Without me even knowing this was slowly but surely happening. I would go visit a major city. I don't care if it was Edmonton in Canada I don't care if I was in, um, again, Boston. I don't care if I was in San Diego because I spent a lot of time there. I could be up in Montreal. I could be in Toronto or whatever. I didn't realize this, but I was visiting, you know, these little Italy towns more and more. And then I started getting hotels there. And before you know it, I kind of became, you know, a regular. It, what I should say is what I learned about my life was <clears throat> I wanted to be in a certain surrounding 
that was different, again, even from Chicago. Because their Little Italy is really like Taylor Street. And it's really, it's not a place you go and stay. It's just different. It's just not, it's not what it once was. Let's just put it that way. And I didn't, you know, Florida doesn't have really any Little Italy type spots. They have some towns that have some really good restaurants and stuff. But when I traveled, I was missing that. And the first that, like I said, I was just visiting them to eat, have coffee. And then before you know it, I'm getting a hotel. And before you know it, while working, that's, I'm spending my days in these communities. And it didn't even hit me back to programming. I kind of wanted to be in the environment I grew up with my grandparents. The one I think for, for, and with my family, to a certain degree, when I left Chicago, I wanted to escape. And, you know, you may be in a situation, too, where you don't realize, like, how much value you have or how much you value certain things, I think, as we get older. We kind of neglect them or forgot about them. And, you know, you're, I think a lot of us grow up in certain environments and we just want to escape it. And I did a podcast, you ex- like, a lot of people want to escape what they, and then they end up recreating it. I kind of learned that about myself. And a lot of that came down to programming. My mind, I don't, I don't even think a lot of times we realize a lot of things that we're doing and how they're maturing. I talk a lot about fitness too. You know, it's interesting. I was just talking to my daughter because we both have, to a certain degree, we both have like eating disorders, but on the opposite ends of the spectrum. And we discussed this yesterday at coffee. Who programmed this in us? Like, I, it's almost, but we really believe no one did. But something, we must have self-programmed this, which is whack because I always felt like I had reverse anorexiaism, which was me always thinking I'm small. Even when I was 250 pounds, I didn't feel good or healthy. I felt like I was going to have a heart attack, even though I worked out a lot. I felt shitty, but I still felt small. She, on the other hand, no matter what weight she's at, she feels, you know, heavier. And I never programmed that in her by any means. I just wanted her to be a machine. And she played a lot of sports. And, you know, it's interesting. And we're just, like I said, we're discussing this. I said, my mother never told me I was small or little or any of these things. Either to my, no, like as a joke. You know, you hear it, you, I just, I almost self-programmed something in my head, or I did, that really had a profound effect on me. And it wasn't always good. One thing I will say, it made me, it still to this day, kept me healthy. It made me strong, working, I mean, I basically programmed myself to work out constantly. And I still have this insecurity, which is amazing, in my 50s. Don't know where it comes from. But, you know, you just sometimes got to think again, and I'm just going to go back to this because it was just on my mind. What, who programmed you again? How are you being programmed now? It could be, again, work, business, people you're around, your family, whatever. That's cool. And what else did you kind of do independently as far as programming yourself to live the life you're leading? Because you're leading it. And I talk a lot about people thinking they're stuck in a certain situation, but they're actually, they're the ones who created it. And, you know, as you get older, you can't keep blaming others. You cannot be a victim. I'm just telling you, it doesn't work. You know, maybe if you're, uh, in the, I don't know, in the 1% and you get millions of dollars, and if you're a victim, people give you money. But the weaker you are, most likely, the harder your life, I believe, is going to be. It doesn't, the weak just it's very hard to survive and I talk a lot about this too programming just simple things waking up instead of feeling always tired exhausted dreading the day you really got to wake up and say I'm healthy just start with that not bullshit yourself and say I'm gonna you know have the best days of my life you may and if you want to keep doing that that's wonderful but I think you got to take sometimes an honest approach you just say I'm gonna kick this day in the ass one way or another even if I accomplish one small thing that I wanted to get accomplished or do one small thing or learn one small thing because it is all about learning and let's face it a lot of learning is about reprogramming because when we learn certain things now we're almost questioning what we either know or what we don't know so just things to think about I just was really uh it just hit me actually I was getting ready to go do some uh, YouTube videos and I said man I haven't done a podcast in a while but I thought throughout my day you know, now my life is so different than it was, say, a year ago because I went from constantly traveling to now not traveling. 
And at the beginning, that was kind of interesting because I was ready for a break, but I was so programmed to go, 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 catch a flight, get in a rental car, go to a location. Not only that, do a video, do a uh, podcast, um, work, set up a schedule. Next day, another city, another state, you know, go, go, go. And then all of a sudden it was like, no go. I had to reprogram my, almost my mind and body to say, now what am I going to do? And I think a lot of people going through maybe something like the virus or the pandemic has changed a lot their life and their mindset. Uh, So again, back to programming, how are you handling this? Are you handling it in the right way or the wrong way? Are you letting everything interfere with your life? It could be political. Are you aggravated all the time? Are you less happy? Or did you turn this on its head and say, you know, what did I learn out of this? What have I learned lately out of the last year of my life truly? And what have I, you know, used to my advantage? Also, what mistakes have I made too? Was I not prepared enough? Did I not ever save enough money? Did I not kind of prepare for a crisis to a certain degree? And I think young people in their 20s and maybe the 30s may have never been through something like this. And I'm not saying I've been through a pandemic, but I know what it is like for the economy or to be rattled or shaked because we've lived through so many decades of it off and on. So anyway, just pay attention and please step outside yourself and become very self-aware of your behavior. I tell people all the time, especially if you're somebody who gets mad all the time or you're somebody who just keeps ending up you know, in a bad situation, what is leading that? I even remember I used to say, when I used to get, you know, I've had some arrests and I've had a lot of jams and fights. And I say, what, what was the component here? That usually led to this. And it was drinking. I wasn't a big drinker. I very seldom drank. Then when I did, I had liquid muscle. But that could be something in your life too you could think about. Not alcohol. But I'm saying one thing that you keep doing that keeps, you know, not working out to your advantage. Uh, It could be jobs. It could be even relationships. The one component that may be missing is you figuring out your behavior may not be working in these situations. And in that behavior, what are those things? Like, what are you doing specifically? You may be lashing out verbally. You may be physical. You may be, um, you know, whatever the case may be, you may have some addiction issues. I, I don't know what you have, but we have to be honest and really figure those things out if we want to, I think, maybe succeed. Or if you don't, that's on YouTube. So, anyways, you get a chance to check out my YouTube channel. Um, also, I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can find out everything about me on richcholenza.com. I have a program, Mastering, Self, uh, Mastering Self-Confidence. You could check that out. It's basically to help men find the woman or women of their dreams, even if they've been through a bad breakup or divorce. And I get into hygiene, fashion, fitness. I also really try to teach men how to live an extraordinary life affordably. So a lot of crazy shit I do. Maybe I could help you. Maybe I can't. Hit me up with any questions or suggestions. I love learning from people. All right, take care.